Audi is synonymous with world-class luxury and performance. A current member of the Volkswagen Group, Audi has a long and complex history going back well over a century. Even die-hard enthusiasts might not be familiar with some of the lesser-known facets of one of the world's most respected automakers. So today, we're presenting 10 things you didn't know about Audi. The first Audi, the Type A Sport Phaeton, rolled off the production line in 1910. But the first company that would help give birth to the venerated automaker came into existence a full 37 years earlier. NSU Motor Works was founded in 1873, first producing knitting machines and bicycles before moving on to automobiles during the early 20th century. Wanderer, another future branch of Audi, was founded in 1885 and produced such diverse machines as bicycles, office machines, typewriters, and motorcycles. In 1902, automotive pioneer August Horton incorporated a Horchin company with a focus on auto production, establishing a second company with a similar name, August Horchin Company Motor Works, a couple of years later. After a falling out with his partners, Horch left his company, but was prevented from starting up a new one using his own name, as his partners from Motor Works were accusing him of trademark infringement. In response, Horch gathered the partners from his two companies, plus NSU and Wanderer, to discuss merging into a powerhouse new manufacturer with a new name. This company would eventually itself merge with fellow manufacturers Horch, Schapauer, and Wanderer to become Auto Union, the company that bears the Audi name today. And the four rings of its logo represent the four companies from which it came. The inspiration for the new company's name came from a little bit of lateral thinking. August Horch was very much in love with the sound of his own name as a brand, believing that it commanded attention, Horch being a German expression for hark or hear. Unfortunately, he was being prevented from using the name, so the partners would need a new name that would carry on this tradition. They found it by simply translating it to Latin. Audi is the imperative form of audire, meaning to hear, and essentially means listen up. The Latin word is also the source of English words like audio and auditorium. But Audi was chosen as the new automaker's name simply because Horch was prevented from using his own, and because all of the partners loved the way it sounded. The name was officially registered on April 25, 1910. Safety has always been central to Audi's engineering efforts, even during a time when it was the furthest thing from the minds of most manufacturers. In fact, many of the safety practices that are standard today were pioneered by Audi. In 1938, they were the first company to perform a crash test, which in this case meant rolling a car down a hill and into a controlled rollover. In front of many spectators and at least one camera, as evidenced by these pictures, the car rolled several times before coming to a stop, engine still running and nearly undamaged. Audi's pioneering ways didn't stop there. They were the first manufacturer to introduce a car with crumple zones, which are designed to absorb the impact of a crash, way back in 1958. And by the 1960s, they began using crash test dummies, another first. The first dedicated facility for performing crash tests was even established by Audi in 1970, a facility which, amazingly, is still in use today. Americans and Brits always enjoy a good argument about which side of the car is the wrong one to place the steering wheel on. But during the early 20th century, when there was no legislation governing this, it was largely up to the manufacturer. Before 1921, all Audi vehicles were right-hand drive, meaning that as far as Americans are concerned, the steering wheel would have been on the wrong side. This was the more accepted configuration then. But in 1921, Audi began producing a left-hand drive vehicle that led to a quick rise in popularity for the underdog configuration. The Audi K, produced from 1921 until 1926 was Germany's first left-hand drive vehicle. By 1923, a quarter of the population owned left-hand drive cars, with Audi leading the pack in popularity. It wasn't until 1938 that the left-hand drive configuration officially became the law in Germany, 17 years after the Audi K first rolled off the production line. Today, over 70 countries still drive on what we in the US perceive to be the wrong side of the road, but we may very well still be doing the same if not for Audi popularizing the steering wheel placement we've come to know and love. Like virtually all German companies, Audi was profoundly affected by the events of World War II. Along with other German manufacturers such as Volkswagen, Daimler, and BMW, Audi has publicly come clean in recent years about its use of POW slave labor during the war. Nazi labor camps housed over 3,700 prisoners who were forced to work for the auto union, and thousands more labored at factories in the East German city of Zwickau and in Bavaria. Richard Brun, the man who negotiated the auto union merger, was even himself a member of the Nazi party. Nearly all of Audi's production facilities, along with those of other automakers, were dismantled and appropriated by the Soviet Union as compensation for Germany's actions during the war. Throughout the 50s and 60s, Audi struggled to produce enough vehicles under its various brands, although curiously not the Audi brand, to remain relevant in the marketplace. Since 1940, no cars had been produced under the Audi name, but after Volkswagen gained a controlling interest in 1964, the brand was reintroduced in 1965 in Germany, and in 1970 in the United States. 
Audi has long prided itself on technological innovation, and this reputation began with its Quattro all-wheel drive system. Audi's 1970s cars like the 80 and the 100 were suffering from a stuffy conservative image, but engineer George Bensinger received a flash of inspiration from Volkswagen's Iltis, a Jeep-like vehicle that had been in use by the German military and which Audi had a hand in developing. It featured an innovative proprietary four-wheel drive system which Bensinger felt could easily be adapted to a car, an all-wheel drive rally car that could have a considerable edge on its competition. The result in 1980 was the Audi Quattro, of which only a few were ever built by hand by Audi engineers. At a time when all-wheel drive was unheard of in rally cars, the Quattro was easily able to outperform all comers and quickly raced out to two World Rally Championships. Variations of the same Quattro all-wheel drive system are available on some high-performance Audi models today, such as the RS series and the screaming fast R8 supercar, which is based on the Lamborghini Gallardo platform. The R8 isn't the only instance in which the influence of another high-end automaker can be seen in Audi's engineering. The very first car in the RS line, the RS2 Avant, is seen by many as the vehicle that cemented Audi's reputation for practical performance cars, and it came about as a collaboration with famed German automaker Porsche. The limited edition vehicle was produced only between 1994 and 1995, and it might not look quite like you'd expect. It was a five-door, five-seat station wagon that nevertheless featured a 2.2-liter, five-cylinder, 20-valve turbo charged engine, and Audi's Quattro all-wheel drive system as standard features. This station wagon topped out at over 160 miles per hour and could achieve 0 to 60 in under 5 seconds. Porsche contributed the braking system and suspension, upgrades that replaced standard Audi 80 gear and gave the Avant the handling capabilities of a high-end sports car. These killer station wagons were rarely seen outside of Europe, and these days they're practically never seen at all. Fewer than 3,000 were ever produced, and any collector that can get their hands on one is unlikely to let it go. In November 1986, the respected CBS news program 60 Minutes ran an expose that was devastating for an automaker so concerned with safety. Reports had been surfacing of a sudden and unintended acceleration taking place in some Audi 5000 models, causing injury and in some cases death. Although no problems had been verified or even identified, 60 Minutes went ahead with their piece, which featured a self-proclaimed expert showing how problems with the 5000's transmission could cause the vehicles to take off like an unstoppable rocket. The only problem was that none of it was true. Most of the known instances of unintended acceleration were later quietly found to have likely been caused by driver error, many of them involving drivers who were new to the vehicle. 60 Minutes Expert was found, off-camera of course, to have literally tampered with the transmission of the vehicle used in the broadcast, drilling a hole in it and pumping it full of pressurized air to achieve the desired effect. No defects were ever found in any Audi vehicle, although a 2012 National Highway Traffic Safety Administration report did conclude that the 5000 had a slightly excessive idle speed, which could cause unfamiliar drivers to panic and misapply their foot to the gas instead of the brake. The whole incident caused a dip in sales and briefly threatened Audi's reputation for safety and quality engineering. The 24 Hours of Le Mans has been held since 1923, making it the longest-running sports car endurance race in the world. As the name implies, it is a grueling 24-hour circuit held on public roads that is designed to test not just a vehicle's speed, but its reliability and fuel efficiency. Many automakers have had stretches of dominance in the nearly century-old race, but very few quite like Audi, which began competing in 1999. They failed to take the prize that year, but over the next 15 years, they would rack up an astonishing 13 victories coming up short only in 2003, 2005, and 2009. Only Porsche has more wins, having dominated with 16 between 1970 and 1998. Audi retired their legendary program in 2016, allowing Porsche to once again take up this mantle of dominance. They've taken the title each of the last three years. Many automakers dabble in products other than cars, and Audi is no exception. But you might be a bit surprised at some of these Audi-branded products. Their engineers designed this space-age-looking chair, the R18 Ultra Chair, which is made from carbon microfiber and high-strength aluminum. It weighs only about 5 pounds, in line with Audi's penchant for achieving lightweight design by shaving off unnecessary weight. There are also a selection of Audi-themed pet products available on their website, like this retractable leash and this golf shirt designed especially for your pooch. But since this is Audi, we also have a couple of projects that are truly innovative. This lightweight prototype electric stunt bike is built for speed and maneuverability, 
clocking in at an unheard of 46 pounds, while boasting the most power of virtually any other electric bicycle on the market. But if that's not high-tech enough for you, 16 Audi engineers in collaboration with a group of enterprising scientists created this lunar rover, which they hope to put on the surface of the moon sometime within the next year. It will use four cameras to navigate the lunar surface and send panoramic pictures back to Earth. And the tricky terrain won't be a problem. It's equipped with yet another iteration of Audi's all-wheel drive system. And of course, its name is Quattro.